Hello my friends and welcome to a special long Tuesday of tutorial. <laughs> I am Leonardo Perez Nieto and today we will draw a cheetah using a white pencil and an eraser on black paper. We begin by sketching a circle for the head. I use a circle almost for any animal or person uh, to start the head, but cheetahs have a very rounded head anyways. We make the top of the head, which is flatter than the circle, and then we briefly sketch the muscle. It comes down like this, almost at a 45 degree angle, and then back like so. It is pretty short, like this. That's pretty simple, the circle and this little square shape, or trapezoid. <laughs> then the neck, we pull a line backwards. Very good. As I mentioned, I'm drawing with white pencil on black cardboard paper. The pencil that I am using right now is a dry pastel, so it is a bit like a chalk, and I use this because it can be uh, easily erased. We do the shape of the forehead in more detail, and then the nose. It is rounded on this side, and then down comes the muscle the front of the muscle. And let's draw the neck that comes down. Over here, it makes the shoulder, the left shoulder. I'll refine the line a little bit more, and also while doing this, I'll make it a little bit uh, darker. That is, <laughs> in this case, it's actually lighter, since uh, we are drawing with white. But what I mean is that we draw more intensely, and the line is heavier. Because it is more definite, and also because our light source is going to be coming from the top left. So these lines are like on the nose and forehead that go toward the top left will be the more white ones. And let's make the ears from here to the back. What I made is a guideline, it's the center line. They will get up to here and then they are pretty triangular. It goes down here and up here. Good. Right in front of the frontal uh, part of the forehead, like here, comes the eyes. Right above the nose, such as a human also. From the lacrimal, uh, there is a very characteristic line that comes down uh, like a teardrop over here. That's very characteristic of uh, very characteristic of cheetahs and many other felines, many other cats. At this time, I'll erase the original line, the original circle, because we don't need it anymore and starts getting on our way. I'm using for this a kneaded eraser. The kneaded erasers that are pliable um, are very handy for this because they pick up, they absorb the chalk without making a mess. Because you don't rub them, you just pick it up. And we clean up the line a little bit. I think cheetahs are very beautiful animals and of course very elegant. Their head is pretty small uh, compared to the body, if we compare them to um, other cats. Like the lions have a huge head and the tiger is pretty big also. Mountain lions have a much smaller head and cheetahs, I think, even more, even smaller. 
and of course they have huge uh, tall legs. Uh, the whole animal is made for speed. In fact, it's the fastest animal on earth, on the ground. We drew the eye pretty simplified right now, practically with two lines. An angle line on top and one on the bottom. The nose should be just a little bit bigger. A little bit further up, like this, and then uh, makes a sort of triangle toward the back. Okay, that's the size. I will clean up and take off just a little bit on top of the nose. The line was curving just a tiny bit too much. And also here, on top of the head. As I mentioned at first, one just makes, one just makes the general lines and then and one can come back and refine and make some more detail, give more shape, because uh, we usually start with very general shapes like the circle or a square or something similar or a rounded shape. Uh, and then once we have the size and proportion right, we come back, like right now, and start uh, doing the little detail and the small corrections, like this shape that should be a little bit further down, like this, a little bit wider. The neck should come down at an angle, like this, and then we will find the shoulder or the upper part of the arm structure. Cheetahs are pretty skinny. <laughs> okay, good. Now I will clean up the rest of the lines that we don't need, the sketch lines, because very soon we will start uh, with the shading. So I make sure that my lines are correct, and especially that are, they are of the correct uh, width, because I went uh, many times over the same line in some of these cases, trying to find the right line. I went over it uh, in slightly different shapes. So now I cleaned up to leave just one line. Having done so, I will start shading or giving the light in this case, since we are drawing on negative. I make a pattern like uh, little lines, like hatching, um, with a pencil. I will give a light tone to all this area, all the area that is uh, facing the top uh, left, uh, because it's the one that is catching the most light. Sometimes it is difficult with this type of pencil to get the, to get the shading pretty even and uniform, but uh, it doesn't matter because we, are work we will work on it uh, a lot or some more at least, so it is not very important if at this stage it doesn't look beautiful. And just a moment ago I said that I was going to give uh, light to the areas that were facing the top left, but actually I will do much more than that. Since the paper is black, I need to take the black off my cut and I will be placing like a very thin layer of uh, white on it, like this. The edge of the ears will be catching more light and so I highlight those. And now I'll continue with the uh, lightening of the areas. I will be doing this uh, slowly and little by little, enjoying the moment, enjoying the drawing, which is what I love. Uh, the only areas that I will really leave uh, black for right now are the ones that will be falling in shadow, uh, that is the back of the neck and the back of the body. Uh, that's the area away from the sunlight that will be kept uh, dark for right now, 
Maybe later, uh, depending on how it is looking, I may give it a light tone of the white. But for right now, that area will remain totally black. So it will be a bit uh, lost uh, with the rest of the background. And that uh, may or may not look good. That is why I say that maybe later I'll give it a little tone of white or maybe not. We will see. I pretty much keep doing the pattern of the shading uh, with little lines that are mo in most of the cases uh, perpendicular, like at an angle. And that's just because that is comfortable for me. Uh, I could be making them in really any angle. It's, it is not like I'm trying to render the four, the direction of the four or some texture specifically. Uh, no, we will lose that because uh, in a little bit I will smudge uh, this layer. So you won't be able really to tell how I did uh, this. I also gave the tone to the ear. Uh, in between all of this, there, there may be some black shadows that we will want to add in later, but uh, this is just a base tone and we can get back to the black of the paper simply by erasing. So if we need a, a shadow, a dark shadow, we can grab the eraser and pull off some of this uh, lighter tone. Now I want to do a little bit uh, lighter this area which is receiving the light and therefore uh, I do another layer but uh, for even's sakes <laughs> what I mean is uh, in order to make it a little bit more even or to try to make it even then I do not keep the same the same lines of hatching but actually cross hatch I make the lines in the different direction in that area that I was talking about. I don't know if you saw it. I turned the angle to the opposite side and did uh, cr some cross hatching. Here, since it's the first layer again, uh, I went to my usual and do some hatching. It is not as precise as doing a hatching and cross hatching as I will do it with a pen or ink, but it's something similar. That's the pattern. And now, with my trusty pinky finger, <laughs> I smudge the cat. I do this very lightly. I want to even it out a little bit. We go over all the pencil. As you see, this was like a chalk material and therefore we can do this. If I had drawn with the Prismacolor Premiere or something like that, of course we could not do this because those pencils are waxed uh, based or the, the regular Faber-Castell that I use a lot of the time are oil based and therefore you cannot smudge them like this at all. I want to go a little bit further down with the drawing. All right. By smudging, I went a little bit off the animal. So with the eraser, I clean up the paper. And then with the pencil, I come back and give much more light to the areas that are receiving it. What I'm making right now is a more final layer, so I will pay more attention on how I lay the pencil so that it uh, represents the four that we want. Let's go over the around the eye. And all this part uh, facing the light, as I said before, goes much lighter, much more intense. More or less on this tone. As you can imagine, I'm pressing the pencil a lot more than before. Not all the cut will be with this tone, of course, just these areas. Because we don't want it to look like a snow, a white cat. Uh, this is going to be a regular one, a regular cheetah. And just the areas that are catching the strong light are the ones that will be white. The rest, uh, not. In fact, uh, the areas on the right, as I told you, right and down, may be pretty black. And let's reestablish the highlight of the ear at the edge, because we lost it by smudging. 
En this area of the cheek also catches a lot of light. I think it's pretty amazing to draw with white on black. It gives you a lot of new possibilities. It's something different, a different uh, concept of drawing in negative. Normally, the darker you want something, the more you push the pencil. And here, the brighter you want something, the more you push the pencil, like right now. But we should remember that we can recover the black if we want to, simply with an eraser. Erasing the white. Cheetahs have white on the neck, so the area of the neck I'll do it also very light. I think I made too skinny this uh, area of the shoulder and arm, so I will go down a little bit uh, wider like this and showing a shape again this side should be brighter earlier we drew a line to mark the lacrimal line that black line that comes down from the eye however since i had a pencil that was white that line i made it white it was a good guideline however in reality that line is black so that is what i am doing right now with the eraser that teardrop a black line just by erasing the white in the same way i'm erasing whatever white was on the nose uh, to make it black except for a very bright reflection and back to the teardrop which then points to a wider not so dark area And on top of the eyes, they have another darker spot. It's like drawing, but uh, with the eraser. And we continue adding the brighter white. On this area of the top of the head is pretty bright because it is on top. However, it's not the brightest because remember that the, the light source is coming from the top left. So whatever is on top, top is just a hair and not as bright. And as we come down, it is less and less bright. On this area, I'm making little lines to imitate the fur of the cat. This area over here of the front of the muscle is very white. I mean, the actual animal has the fur white in this area. Now I will begin drawing some spots, some black dots, uh, and I will do this with the eraser. On the face and head, it has a very small uh, black spots. Let's do some others over here, right on top, pretty small. The good thing about this type of eraser is that we can point it and shape it in whatever form we need it. I'll clean up the lacrimal and the eye area a little bit more before I draw the actual eye. Also that black little spot uh, on top of the eye that we were talking about. That's pretty characteristic of cheetahs and actually many cats. 
Let's draw the edge of the ear a little bit better, more in detail with some hairs and with more highlights. I'll give a better shape to the eye before I'll draw what goes inside. Uh, what I mean is I like the eye socket, a better shape to the eye socket. This bottom part curves up pretty rapidly, while the upper part is more straight, and it comes down slightly. Ok, now the eye, the globe, the rounded part. Go from there to here, more or less like this. And it all should have a tone, uh, except the pupil, which uh, will stay black. On the pupil we should have a bright reflection, right here. This part that is below the eye, just below the eye, as it uh, sticks out a little bit, it also should have more light. And up here. Some hair. I switched to a different pencil. This one is actually a watercolor pencil, which I will be using with no water. <laughs> I will be using it as a regular uh, color pencil. But um, the reason I switched to this one instead of the other one that I was using, like chalk, is because I want more precision on the line, a sharper line, to do the hair of the fur and some specific highlights. So for now, I will be using this. I was not using this at the beginning for two reasons. One is because this one cannot be easily erased, so to sketch it definitely I was not going to use it. <laughs> and secondly, because this one cannot be smudged, so to give that uh, light tone at the general uh, whitish uh, tone that I gave to the whole cat, I needed more uh, something like the chuck and not this one. I'm pulling some whiskers right now. But now that I know that I will not erase and also that I don't need smudging, then this one is much better, more precise and cleaner. It is easier to keep it clean. And we continue with the fur. I'm trying to keep the texture, the little hair, just by doing little lines. And with the eraser we keep uh, pulling some black spots. It would be better to do the spots first, because uh, if we lay too much of the hair with the other pencil, that one cannot be easily erased. It can be erased, but you need to really rub it a bit more. As the dots come down, they become a little bit bigger. They become larger and larger as they come down. You know, looking at it, all this area over here that is black, I don't like it very much. Remember at the beginning that I told you that I was going to take a look at it and see if I was going to leave it black or not? Well, the verdict is not. <laughs> so I switch back to the chalky uh, pencil and I will give a tone to all this area so that then we can draw some spots, some black spots by erasing. That technique uh, seems to be working very well in the areas uh, that I applied it. So let's do that also over here. We do the original tone, um, smudge it with the finger, like this, and now that we have a whitish tone, then we can draw the black spots on it. If we had left the paper black, we wouldn't be able to do something like this. Some of the little ones up here, and inside the ear should also be darker, mainly because it is in total uh, shadow. Cheetahs have a lot of spots, little ones on the head. 
As I said, as the spots come down toward the body, they increase in size. It has uh, spots on the neck also, like this. All right, little ones over here by the whiskers. When erasing, you don't necessarily, of course, need to go all the way to the black. Also, with this eraser, you can simply lighten a tone, making it less uh, white and less intense. And now back to the watercolor pencil, uh, let's do some more hair. Sometimes uh, hair can go on top of the black spot. That looks all right. And with this pencil, we can also increase uh, some of the highlights, like here. I wanted to have a little bit more difference, even more highlights and more darks. Some hairy over here. And over here. As you see, I'm going all over, back and forth, because at this stage I'm just looking at the whole drawing as I draw and see some things there and some here, here and there, and uh, tackle each one that I see. I have seen some artists that start from one spot, from one end, and they carry, swipe all the way to the other end, leaving each area perfect and perfectly finished. Uh, not me, I mean that's one technique and this is another one where uh, you can move back and forth and bring the whole drawing forward more or less at the same stage. I think this may be a little bit more academic, this technique. All this area that is here to the left, uh, I want to make it a lot brighter. I wanted to really show that the light is coming from the left. And all this area is just uh, in a bath of white. Or of light, I want to say. Yeah. The fur often comes in uh, layers, so let's do some layers over here. Uh, like, uh, like if uh, the tip of the hair was catching light and what goes more inside is in shadow, in the shadow that the upper layer is uh, casting on it. All this area with light. And back to the chalky pencil. As you see, the watercolor one, I use it for the detail. When I was making individual hairs and some highlights, uh, that was it, because you can really sharpen it well. This part over here is turning, so it is not as bright anymore, and quickly it turns into shadow. Let's put some hair here, some bright ones, and also here some more highlight. Just some touch-ups here and there. The hair of the neck is pretty fluffy and it's a little bit longer. I want to draw the lips of the mouth. And for this, what I will do is do them with a black uh, pencil. Instead of erasing, since it will be more a precise line that uh, what I can easily get with the eraser, uh, then I can do this uh, painting the black.
And now, using a fine stick eraser, I sharpen my edge over here. And with this one, I can also draw the spots. It's actually a little bit easier with this because it erases uh, harder than the kneaded eraser. So for something that goes uh, totally black, uh, we can do it very well with this one. And si since it is pretty small, it's good for this. You know what? I'm going to smudge all this area to integrate it a little bit more. And to even it more. Now we can come back with the eraser and do the spots on it. On this area they start being uh, bigger. However, all the spots in all the body of the cheetah uh, are sort of uh, small. They are not as big as uh, a leopard or something like that. Also back here, where it is turning into shade, it should have spots. We should go back to this area. Of course, it is too white still. Throughout all this area, it should have spots. We can make some uh, really small ones. Some can be just like this, just like a uh, hair lifting more than the color of the spot. This particular eraser has a, a flat, like a chisel point, which is really good for this. You can use it uh, flat, the whole thing, or you can use a corner for really small uh, areas. Some more highlight over here, like on the shoulder, and just some hairs here and there, or some little group of hairs. You can almost not see this, but I want uh, some to be lighter than others, and some slightly darker, and not all even. I want to bring this shoulder and arm uh, forward, so let's lighten it up a lot more. And like this. Very good. We smudge it a little bit, and we go over this area, which should be even brighter. I work my way pretty much around the dark spots. I sped the video up a little bit because uh, I think you can almost not see the changes on what I'm doing individually, since they are so slight. I am back to using the chalky pencil, uh, as you probably noticed, since I smudged it. We are almost getting there, but I want this area still a little bit brighter. I know I have said that before, but I'm working my way, uh, like uh, increasing the intensity little by little. So I increase it a little bit more, and then I see that I want it still more, and I go back and increase it, and this can be repeated many times. And I switch the pencil again to the other one to do individual hairs, to do more detail. And when I said individual hairs, I didn't mean one by one or really individual. I meant uh, those little lumps of hairs that go all together. So when I said individual, I meant a little clump. With the black pencil, I did some little dots where the whiskers begin. And also now I give some depth to the hair, to the layers or to the lumps, like uh, making little shadows uh, underneath the layers. And also I can go over some of the dark spots if I need to. A 
Let's make some more spots with the eraser, especially on the side, on the arm, and uh, going to the back, and also on the front part of this arm, and like the chest, some little ones. Good. I really like doing these spots with the eraser. Feels good. I'm giving it the last touches. We're getting to the end. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. I would love to know in the comments if it was. We sharpen the whiskers, give it the last touches, and it's ready. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to find our tips, click on the little bell to get notifications of new videos, and I will see you on Tuesday.